Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season two finale of Sweet Home. Great season finale. A lot of very interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the stuff at the shelter, because it ends up being kind of like the smaller part of the episode, because everything else kind of expands like all the other elements, but the smallest bit is the shelter stuff, where we open with um, Chief G getting uh, Seung and getting him to cooperate, because I thought it was kind of interesting the way she ended up choosing him out of anybody, and it turns out the reason why is because she knew she could use him, because it turns out she knows that he is a... a uh, she recognized he was already showing symptoms of transforming, because she recognized, because I think it's interesting, she immediately recognized it in Sergeant Talk. She kind of knew, but he was bleeding, so she thought, oh, maybe I'm wrong. But that's only because the wound healed beforehand. I mean, she was, I don't know, like, I guess that worked against her. Because obviously she had uh, Yi um, CO go cut the power, because we find out the power cut off, not because it was shut down, someone cut the wiring. It was... Uh, ye see all, but because she's so bougie about stuff, she left one of her rings behind. It's like, that's kind of your fault. You, if you weren't so eccentric the way you are, you wouldn't have had to worry about that. But they were able to quickly find out about her. I was also curious about the Sergeant Talk thing because his subordinate recognized his eyes, but the moment he turned his eyes from the mirror, they were normal. So the guy's probably going to brush it off like, oh, I must be crazy. I must be heightened because of everything that's going on. So they think, um, you know, they end up grabbing up Yisiel and she tries to pretend like she doesn't know anything and Chief G shows up and she's like oh I'm repairing the power I don't know what you're talking about and then like the moment her daughter's there she slaps her which is so sad because it's like no I'm going along with your plan who knows what they're going to do to her whether they're going to torture her or what but Chief G kind of looks sad in a little bit but also like right this is it, that's why she was so quick to use her daughter because she picks people she knows she can use her, her daughter sadly like, it's kind of done up, but just feed off of her reputation. But also, it's like, it's a sacrifice because it's like, right, they won't kill you. They might try to pump you for information. But, yeah, she kind of threw her daughter to the wolves. What you can tell Sergeant Talk is like, yeah, there's no way your daughter would do some stupid stuff like this without your say-so. But I'm going to let you think you're getting away with it. So, she goes back to see on one and takes him somewhere. And it's like, what is she about? Because at first, you're trying to make it seem like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to expand this place for... Uh, those who are infected. She was saying some BS just to kind of draw Seong Gwon in. But the moment they're going deep into an area, she knocks him down. I'm like, wait, are we, are you feeding them? Because now it puts so many things into perspective. Why she gave a shit about uh, Junil's mom in the first place. It's like, oh, you're going to leave and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, why is, why was she so important to you? Because she was going to be, I was thinking maybe it's a child, but maybe it's actually her husband. Because the photo, the picture is on a child. and I mean, not unless that was her daughter, but I was, I was thinking for a second, like maybe they had another child that got infected. I don't know. Or maybe she, her husband's actually still alive. Because what we saw of that fight, her husband got knocked into like something and got impaled upon it. So he might not be dead. I mean, obviously the healing factor of a monster. I don't think either one of them, like Eon Yu nor... Uh, nor... Hyun went to go inspect the body because obviously uh Chun Young showed up pretty quickly afterwards. So they probably like returned the body, but it probably I mean, as we know, extensive amount of damage, it takes a little bit longer from for them to come back from it after a while. So it could have been thing of they brought his body back and then just kind of she kind of quietly disposed of it when in actuality he's probably been alive this entire time. She's just been feeding people to it. And now but that's why I think June Ill its mom comes into place because she was going to like, hey, make it seem like she escaped and got away, but in secret, like no way that way, no one asked any question when she disappeared. I don't know how you're going to explain this Seung of it all. Just like, oh, he managed to escape. It's like, well, the place is on lockdown, so him getting out was just kind of like that. Seems like a no, but I don't know how she's covering that up. I mean, she's desperate. She's kind of backed into a corner once again. She kind of threw her daughter to the wolves, but now it makes that Eon you um 
situation even more interesting because she made the point of, I'm not going to kill you as a human. I'm going to wait for you to turn into a monster, then kill you because she was going to feed you to her husband. I'm, I'm thinking like, right, it's not even a child situation. I think her husband's still alive and she's been feeding him this entire time. How she gets the monster on, in him controlled enough is by feeding him maybe and justifying it by maybe maybe it's not her husband, whoever it is. I, my money's on her husband still being alive, but maybe it's someone else. But she's feeding them monsters to kind of satiate their hunger and keep them going. Because, like, well, as long as you feed them, they're not going to go berserk. As long as you keep them locked up in a very specific area. But it's poor, poor, uh, Siung, which is, once again, that OG squad is whittled down. Because at this point, the only people left of the OG squad now, when the episode's said and done, we'll get to the Yi Kyung of it all later. But the only ones left now are Eon, um, uh, Yan Yu, um, Miss Han, and Yeong. They are the only ones left. We we're talking about the, uh, the little stinger at the end, too. So, those three plus someone else. When, like I said, we'll talk about that more when we get there. But that's, to everyone's knowledge, only three. I mean, because none of them know about Seong yet. So, he's, he, yeah, but. So, to their knowledge, it's only three. And even Yeon Yu has no intentions of coming back. So, it's really only Miss Han and um, Yong, so that's, that's so interesting, um, cause maybe that's all, cause she's also justifying by being like, yeah, I'm not murdering anyone, cause these people are already monsters, so she's trying to justify it in that regard, she even tried to say like, hey, Seong, if you had stayed unconscious, this would have made this as painless as possible, but... She does feel bad about it, but she tries. She can justify in her head, well, well, they're monsters, so they'd get rid of monsters anyway. The patrol, I'm just putting them to better use of keeping someone I know that's a monster alive. So that's where we left off with the um, with the shelter, but there's still a lot more on that front. So other than that, we also have this situation with Hyun, uh, Chun Young, and. Eon U.S. are taking... I was thinking, like, oh, they're going to go back to the shelter. But it's like, no, that's too far of a trip. So they're taking uh, Yi Kyung to the closest place they can, like a pharmacy or a hospital, rather, and try to give her some oxygen. She's dying of uh, carbon monoxide poison. But the problem is there's no oxygen in the hospital and there's no time to take her back to the shelter without her dying. So it, they all they can do is wait. And obviously this hits hard for... I believe this is when Yi Kyung, no, this is when um, Hyun and Eon Yu had the conversation about everything that happened. It's like, who's left? And she even says he Aen is dead, which I don't, like I said, I don't think she had an on screen death. So either that was like during episode three, during the missile strike of the uh, stadium that she died, or it might have been um, in between like episode three and four that year time skip whatever the case may be it, she even she talks about like everyone being gone and even it hits um it hits Hyun hard too because like right finding out in the time you've been away so much of the group is dead there's at least some of the group he was already aware of he knew like yuri was dead he knew son wook was gone i mean he actually knows son wook's circumstances better than anyone else's but yeah like that group kind of being whittled down to what it was and just I mean, just the base survivors that were left at the end of season one, just like how our group is whittled down to what it is, is wild. And she'd ask about Eon Hyuk, like, oh, what happened to my brother? It's like, well, the last time I seen, saw him, he didn't seem any different. But for her, it's like, yeah, but I don't even know if he's out there as a monster, or whether he died as a human. But for her, it's like, I'm at the end of the day, I'm happy you came back to me. And she still hasn't told him about the promise. And I'm curious if he'd ask her about it in the future. But it's like that promise that... She once again, we as the audience know what she was thinking when she made that pinky promise with him, but he'll never know, sadly. But this all sparked Hyun to go find Yi Kyung's daughter because it's like, right, I need to find someone. It's like, right, he knows what it's like to not be able to say goodbye. He didn't get a chance to say goodbye to his family, whether it's like in real life or even just the fake world that the monster inside of him created and made it seem like he was in the car with them. Like, he obviously didn't get to say goodbye in that regard. And so he didn't want her to have those regrets. So he does track her down at like the place she's hiding out. And obviously she doesn't even have the proper concept of death. Cause she's like, what does it mean to die? It's like, you'll never see her again. So she's pissed. She's like, right, fine. I'm fine with that. It's like, no, you don't. 
you do this, you're going to you're going to be fine now, but eventually you'll regret it. And it's like, was well, there anything you can do? He's like, no, I wish I could. She's like, do you want her to die? It's like, no, I don't. I want her to live, but there isn't much I can do about it. And so, like, so what do I have to do? It's like, don't you don't have to do anything. Just stay by her side. And so he takes her back. And I was hoping, and maybe on some level it did happen, maybe it didn't. I thought there'd be kind of an issue of her, like, her touching Yi Kyung barehanded. Because it seems like even Hyun never knew about her, her ability to, to make people in the monster. So it seems like even he didn't know that. The only person that knows about that is Yi Kyung. But the problem is, I thought at the very least, like I had brought it up previously, like it seems like sometimes she can do it accidentally, like she did with Juno. But I, I think that's because that was like she touched him sure, but the monsterization process was a little bit different in that regard. It's I mean, we've seen it so far. It, it hasn't fully, fully mes- manifested as like a full monsterization. They become monsterized to some extent, but they still maintain enough of a, like a regular human form. They do kind of remind you more of a uh, of a like a neo human or special infected. The way they operate, like Junio, once again, did not show any symptoms, or even a special infected would. So it's like you have some of that after you have some of the elements of it, but not all of the effects of it. Still, still a bit question mark when it comes to her circumstances. But I thought because she can see people's memories just like Hyun can, they share that ability. And I don't think Hyun knows about that. I don't even well because Yikyong she knows that Yikyong knows her daughter could like read her thoughts and knew what, exactly what she was thinking. But I don't know if they put that together because I don't think Hyun's talked to anyone about that. The only time he's experienced that was when he was at that facility in episode. Two is when he... No, no, no. It was three, I believe. Yeah. I believe that was episode three. No? No, that was episode... Uh, episode two, I believe. Yeah, that was episode two. They were at the facility. And that happened, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's the only time he's experienced that. And he hasn't really talked to anyone else about it. So, I was thinking maybe she... Her mom can't really talk to her. She's tearing up and saying, I'm sorry. I thought by holding her hand, maybe she'd get to see all the stuff her mom really wishes she could say and what she was feeling. Maybe she did. But she... was Because, like I said, this is all something new to her. Like, she's never really had... Like, she had her friends. Like, oh, you hurt my friends and they died. But I guess... She never quite fully understood the concept of death because she was like, wait, what do you mean die? What does that mean? I guess it's like, right, you hurt my friends, but I never, she never quite understood the concept of someone dying and being gone forever. But she used her powers to shift her mom because she was like, right, you don't have to cry about her anymore. This way, I think in her mind, it's like, right, my mom gets to live on and you don't have to feel so sad about it. So it's okay. I guess she knew on some level that her mom would never just quite be her mom again, but I think she was fine with saying goodbye. It's like, right, you get to live, but it puts Hyun in this complicated spot because he has to stop her. And the sad thing is, like, the transformation isn't all the way through because it even manifests itself as, like, only half of her body transformed, the other half stayed human, and she's trying so hard to fight it. And so it's up to Hyun to put her down, and he ends up using his powers. And he talks about it later on uh, with um, Hyun... um, Eun Yu that with this power he can see like, like I said the show doesn't cover it as much at least from what I read of the mon where they covered it a little bit with Miss M circumstances when she became the baby uh, in the in 1408 like the bathroom we saw what that looked like though on the other side of her like I said the only time we've seen like the dream sequence that the monsterization kind of puts you in it puts you kind of in a happy dream to some extent kind of lure you in the only time you get that really in the show was what happened with um Hyun, uh, with his, uh, like, the, the accident with his parents, but he was inside the car and survived. That's the closest you get in a show, but they don't really lean into it too much in a show. But like I said, you get instances of it in the, the webtoon. And so, it is a situation of, he can see into those dreams, and he saw what Yi Kion was going through. Like, where most people are going to be happy, like, they're tapped into these happy memories and dreams while they're in the monsterization. That's what kind of keeps them in that state. Yi Kion's is a nightmare. She's dreaming about, like, she doesn't want to kill her daughter. Like, even to the point she was pointing a gun at her, turned it the other way, and fired the bullet, and it still ended up shooting her daughter and killing her. And it's like, she's stuck in this perpetual hell. She's running down this hallway of hands, and she's trying to reach her daughter, and her 
di distance because there's a part of her that's like, oh, monsters have to die. It's, it's that that desire and just the com confliction. I think that's also why she's manifested the way she is because it represents the side of her that wants to kill her daughter but also the side that loves the daughter and how conflicted she is. And so it's up to Hyun to kind of put her down. And for him, it was his way of kind of freeing Ikeon because leaving her in that state wouldn't have she would there was no happiness for her in that state so he thought he did her a, a solid and it kind of put things in perspective of like right even though they're monsters they're still human enough on the inside they they because they don't have the concept up until now of like oh there is still a human inside somewhere just like in sun like song wook is still there somewhere underneath Wumion, but we'll, we'll get to that soon enough but Ian, you was like, right, at the end of the day, he, they were trying to kill you, so it is self-defense. But it's like, right, you have to go back. She's going to stick around Hyun. Uh, because I think for her, it's like there's no place left at the shelter. She's not really close to anyone at the shelter. Like all the ties she had to people like Miss Han, Seong, Wan, or even Young, it's like that's all kind of severed. Just let them forget me and I'm just going to disappear. He has his duty, so he is going to go back. Um, and even Seong, uh, Chan Seong, Chan Yeong was kind of like, right, it is so interesting how you can just kind of, not, she kind of is very good at compartmentalizing, I mean, that was a big part of her character in season one was how she put up this front like everything was okay and she just kind of accepted it, like, she was very good at compartmentalizing everything, and it's like, right, go and just never come back, so um, it's kind of sad things played out that way kind of were hoping they'd get to stick it out together but yeah the shelter's going to need him granted he's probably going to suffer some ramifications for coming back uh what that all looks like especially with what he knows will he be able to say anything to anyone i mean that might mean something when we find out the truth about uh chief g circumstances or when the truth is revealed about uh sort of talk so we'll see Another element, well, no, I was about to shift things over, but I'm like, no, I gotta, I'll finish up where I am th with there. But she goes to check on Hyun, but he's different. I was like, at first I was like, is this an after effect of Yi Kion's daughter touching her? But it's like, no. I guess to get free of what Wu Myung did to him, I interpret it as like, oh, he gave into his monster side because it's like, oh yeah, it was our deal. Like I would kind of, you know, take over when he needs, because he needs to recover, so... I'm kind of in the driver's seat now, like his darker side, his monsterization side. Because he's kind of put that to bed. But to be fair, it's always got to been there because, I mean, he lost himself to the monster. It's always been about, like, even though he is in the state he's in, he's still fighting back against it perpetually, like forever. It's not ever going to go away until he fully, fully gives into it, which he hasn't. Guess he kind of has. It's kind of like a we're all taking turns in the driver's seat. So his eyes kind of had like this blue shading to them where it seemed like it was kind of a control thing. Because if it was the monster inside of him, why wouldn't his eyes turn like pure like black? So I, I don't know. But that's where things left off. What I thought was interesting, though, it's like, what do you want to do? Like he was leaning in. It's almost like because like Eon, you definitely likes him. So I'm curious if that was kind of an indication of like, you know, you have this opportunity. What are you going to do? And that's the last we see of that. So we have that. We also have the storyline with Hani and her boss slash dad slash brother. And she had talked about the fact is, I think she was specifically referencing Eon Yu and Hyun about how they glowed. She was like, yeah, even, even she kind of had this glow like they were actually alive. Because it was like, it's, she's like, oh, you're a hypocrite or you're, you're a coward. She's like, what? makes me so different and it's like what makes you so different is you've never glowed we never have so it's almost a thing of because because they have no glow to them because they are just simply alive they are never going to be in a situation where they'll give into their desires that will make them into monsters and he's like that's what makes us different so let's go somewhere where there are no humans or monsters but then uh Hani ends up poisoning him. Doesn't seem like he's dead. She just knocks him out. Because if she was going to kill him, like she would have just put him, left him on the side of the road. But she put him in the trailer to take him along. And it's like, where are they going to go? She's like, yeah, I'm sick of just being on our own. Because going where there's no humans or monsters, that's boring. So I'm assuming she's going to be heading in the direction of the uh, the shelter. She did tell uh, Chan Young uh, last episode 
hey, like, you know, we didn't work out in this life, but maybe in the next life. So next life might be creeping up to you a lot quicker, Chon Young. So which uh, obviously uh, Yi uh, Seal would not be too happy. And problem is if those two butt heads, uh, that's going to be a big issue for uh, Yi Seal because I uh, honey is a the girl is unhinged. So another small bit of the story is going to be interesting to see where that goes. But then back to the main facility, we have the group so scattered. They are still, well, uh, Seonjin and the other dude are still, well, they're looking for Yon uh, Siok. And as they're trying to find him, one of the other members, that the guy that's with him is kind of freaking out because he's like, yo, like we got to get out of here. We're going to die. But he's like, get your shit together. I get it. You're scared. It's understandable. We got to find Yon Siok. And so they go and sadly run into a guy, which I'm like, that's kind of a problem. You haven't run into anyone at all here. You run into a random guy and he locks you in a room. And I was like, that's not good. Then there's like a sealed room where one of the guys unloads and he ends up getting murdered. We don't see what happens to CO Jin, but I'm pretty sure he's probably going to catch it next. Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. He's kind of got plot armor to some extent i mean anyone can catch it in this obviously amongst these characters too so there's i was like there's no guarantee kim lim dr lim or um even siok chen like the guy that's with uh sergeant kim like there's no guarantee none of them will make it out of this which they run into a little girl who was hidden because they're ultimately trying to decide what they're going to do if they run across uh young siok and he's a monster and Kim doesn't know what he'll do, but he's like, if I hesitate, it'll be up to you to, you know, use your best judgment, uh, uh, Siak, uh, Chen, to decide how you're going to approach that situation. They meet a little girl, and I was kind of a little nervous about it. I'm like, there's no way. She's like, oh, I'm human. There's like, there's, because they just assumed looking at her, they never tested it, which they should have. They just saw her and just assumed she was human, which is bullshit because they're going by the typical standard of like oh her eyes would be black but she looks human she's not showing any symptoms you idiots like once again dr lim even said in himself the circumstances have evolved and things have changed so you can't go by the like the classic rule of how things have been up to this point things are changing and especially in this facility so they end up eventually finding young siak but the problem is he's locked up I was like, don't you think it's a little conspicuous that she's locked? he's locked up behind some, like, it looks like it's not just locked. It looks like there's stuff on it, but maybe you, maybe that has nothing to do with, like, the door being locked. Maybe it is just locked and you can unlock it with a key, but it looks like there was, like, sludge on it, like a very specific type of material slime that was kind of keeping the door closed, but maybe it had nothing to do with it. Kim goes with the girl, turns out the whole thing's a trap, it's a whole setup, because they are, we find out, interestingly enough, the people here, once again, there's the groups that are separated. So it's like, oh, there's, it's like, cause even, um, it was like, oh, wasn't, why are they so like perfectly in eye view of like being separated? So I wonder what is the delineation between the group, like, uh, Seo Jin saw amongst the, like two different rooms. Like what was the significance there? But basically turns out Wu. Uh, Mion, which I kept being like, wait, why are you here? I kept saying it the entire, uh, ever since episode four, like, what has he been up to? I was like, you think like the stadium and stuff like that would have been a target. It's like this, he's been too quiet. We haven't, cause we also didn't know what happened to Hume. But like I said, Hume probably gave into his, if he gave into his monster side, that's how he got out, uh, by kind of striking that bargain that might also tie into why he disappeared and never really got back around them. I mean, one, he's, he's a monster. He's, you know, he's in his, he's a special infectee slash neo-human slash MH, but he, you know, monster human, but he, um, didn't want to be around the others, but maybe that could have also been a contributing factor to his circumstances. But, um, other than that, it, it's revealed that the people here are all the monsters, uh, Wu Myung released in episode, at the end of episode three, well, nearing the end of episode three, and they've just all evolved to just look like regular humans. Because the ones he had let out. Not unless these are the other specific like 
Because we haven't seen any like regular, what would be considered, re except for on the outside. I'm assuming those are some of the other hidden subjects. But like I said, they were de delineated groups of, yeah, here's the greens, here's the reds, here's the yellows. And then there were also the MHs, the monsters. So these two in particular might be two monster human subjects. But they're, they are our former subjects that most likely evolved. Or they could have been regular monsters in the red, yellow, or green category that evolved to become more neo-human um, or monster human-esque. They, they basically ranked up and evolved. So Kim's not dead. He's being held down. And the whole point was, hey, you can have a choice. You can either die or you can basically become us and become the next step in the evolution. Because that's what Wu Myung's all about. Dr. Lim is just kind of enjoying his best life kicking back because he's talking about like, oh, what what would you be like the giant egg that's in the center? And he's like, what is, what are you? And, you know, oh, how does it feel to be a monster? He's like, I'm stuck as a human. And he guess, I guess I won't really know until I go through it. So he lays down, I guess it's like, it's so interesting that he has such a, like a, I, my first comparison to him, I later on said like, oh yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Monroe from like the island of Dr. Monroe like that's kind of what he's doing. but I also f first described him as kind of a Victor Frankenstein and I think that could still be a very apt description in this case but it's almost like he is so fascinated with the monsters but it's almost like he wants to be a part of them too like I guess it's like to fully understand something you have to kind of go through it yourself because no matter how much he dissects them and looks into them he can't quite know it and fully understand it and the mad scientist in him wants to fully understand it so with that all said and done um he runs into uh Sion Wook, not Sion Wook, Song Wook, and it's like, oh, so here you are, you finally reveal yourself. What I thought was interesting, though, if you see, like, the way he's limping, it seemed like part of his, the whole thing of, like, how he petrified Hyun, it seems like it's happening to him, or at least part of his body. I'm like, what happened? Did your leg get hurt and never recover? And is that your way to kind of, well, since it never recovered, I'm a heart in it, and that way I can, but it's just like, I don't get that. There's just so much we don't know about that. But in that moment, he reveals himself to be exactly who I thought he was. He's freaking Sanwa. I was like, I thought that was the case, but I thought I was being stupid for even thinking that. Because it's like, right, he never had any proper reaction around Yi Kiong. To be fair, when Yi Kiong was there seeing his body, he did kind of peek out after she left because he saw what she was going through. With the No, it was like, I think she had passed out on the floor after everything, after the pregnancy situation. It might have been after she left, but I'm pretty sure it was like after she passed out, he was looking like, huh. And but once again, the body's eyes of Song Wan's body, his eyes were open. Oh, no, open, yeah, open when he was dead, but they were closed before. So I was like, you did something. And I was like, were you talking? When he's like, oh, because I was like, were you another test subject at the time? The way he was talking with such familiarity, being like, oh, how you look now is pathetic. It's just like, I kept thinking that's what he was supposed to be. And they never revealed that. So I felt like, oh, maybe I'm stupid. Because I, you could go back. I suggested that like season one being like, oh, is that where they're going with that? Is, are we going to, I felt stupid because I, I got to it a couple episodes later being like, oh, did I, did I miss this? Is this what they're setting up? And they never pulled the trigger on it. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm being stupid. And I, like I said, this entire time I was suggesting like, I thought like, oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe he was just another MH. Because they kept referencing one and I figured they were talking about song uh, one, but I didn't think, but yeah. So it makes that whole situation even more interesting. And I guess like the monster side of him just doesn't care about her anymore. So a lot of that human in him died. So I guess that could be the justification why. Because Sung Wan died a long time ago. After everything he went through, like the human in him was is buried deep underneath, stuck in that, that dream sequence, you know? So that dream that all the people who are going through monsterization go through. So the real him is still there. Maybe he's there with Yuki Yong and their daughter. So, which is going to be interesting because Yuki Yong has been removed from Lord because sadly she is gone now, but her daughter's still out there and that's going to be a prime. Cause I brought up like, Oh, it seemed like we could easily see Yuki Yong's daughter siding with him uh, with Wu Myung, but even more of that's the case of like, oh, I'm actually your father, so. I mean, especially because him and Dr. Lim were friends, so he even being like, it's nice to see you again, and it's just like, oh, because it's like, right, I'm in a new body, you don't recognize me, but every I was your first test subject, I was the one you were the most interested in. 
like I said, we still don't know how that came about, but it could be a thing of he reached out to Dr. Lim and then that's kind of what jump started everything because he reached out to his friend of like, hey, you're a scientist, help me out with this. But then I became the test subject. You, Because he's the one that probably, that's why he was the most like, hey, Hyun, you don't want to go here earlier this season at the beginning because he's like, you don't want to do this because of what they'll do and like the trauma he has associated with being like the number one subject. It was probably a while before he got any more, so all of his attention was on Song Won. So it's like all the stuff he put him through, as we saw, like cutting off his arm, getting cutting off his hand, getting blood samples. It's like he was run through the gambit. And we only got little teases here and there about what he's going through, but he's mentioned uh, what happened to him. It's like it's a horrendous situation. Now he gets to pay Dr. Lim back because he's like, oh my God, I was so hoping you'd actually still be alive. But like my biggest question though was like, why has. Song Wan just been laying low here the entire time. Has he been just trying to build up his monster forces the entire time? And it's just he needs time to build up his army before he like unleashes it. Is that what he's doing? He's just biding his time. I mean, because they brought up the whole conversation. The monsters are evolving because they're probably all following under his leadership. Or it could just be like, no, they're just straight up evolving. So they're all getting smarter. But it could also be him helping them evolve. Because at the end, we see all these monsters scattered out outside. So Dr. Lim definitely isn't dead. And I doubt... Uh, Sergeant Park, Seon Jin, because we never actually see him die. Uh, the other dude, Seok Chun, like he's not dead. He gets grabbed and lifted up. Other dude though that's in there, like at least two, like uh, was Usiok and um, the other dude that was with Seon Jin. Most likely, he he's most likely dead too. But yeah, and that's not even the end. We also get hit with our little teaser at the end. Where it turns out Eon Hyuk is there. Now, to be fair, this could also be very similar to what he did last season. Where during the episode 9 of last season, what did he do? He played like he was along with home dude Sai. Which uh, Song Wan was hiding amongst him like uh, sheep and wolves, uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, well, he made the whole reference of like rabbits and um, wolves. So, maybe Eon Hyuk is doing the same thing here. Playing... Uh, playing rabbit when he's actually a wolf. I guess even more so, probably more accurate to be like playing wolf when he's actually a rabbit, to be more so precise. I don't know. But it makes the most sense that he'd still be out there because what did Eon Yu find in episode two? She found the note with all the names written down of those infected who are dead and also his glasses, but never found the photo because she even opened up the CD like... um her CD player and didn't find the picture. So I was like, it, it was not in that area, even though all that other stuff related to him is in that same general area. Cause that's where he was for the picture not to be there. Must mean he took it with him. So Eon, you must be playing. I mean, Eon, he might be playing a long game, not less. He did kind of give in, but we will have to wait and see. Cause that doesn't seem that's not the same one that Dr. Lim was staring at before he walked away. Cause there's that one. There's also the one he found. I don't know think that's the one he found in the woods that he broke off a piece of. I think that's a different one. I think the one Eon Hyuk came out of was a different one, but I think it's rel it's definitely in that same area. I mean, not unless it's a different place, but because that that place he came out of there were monsters surrounding the outside, so so many because I was so curious because like the storylines were so spread thin I was like Hyun and Eon um Eon Yu's storyline doesn't seem like it connects to Dr. Lim's storyline or what's happening at the shelter I mean it's all connected sure but they are so massively disconnected and I'm like how are you going to tie this all together it's like no we're leaving those threads loose because it's all coming back together for the third season which as we got at the end the sh this is the show is coming back for a third season. I, I was cause I already saw that when I started season two. I'm like season three in 2024 summer. I was like that's interesting. I was like oh they apparently filmed these seasons back to back because I don't know how impact because once again the first season came out 2020. I don't know how impact. I don't know what Korea's filming schedule was like. What their stuff was like during COVID. So maybe they got some of the filming done, but then like. Before they wrapped on production, they maybe just went ahead. Maybe that's why they waited so long, too, is they wanted to make sure they had two and three done back to back. And then maybe it's a lot of post production that needed um, uh, finishing up, too. But there is going to be a third season. I looked it up because I was curious based on some articles I'm reading. Because Netflix hasn't said anything 
officially, at least like on the title, it just says like, season three is coming in 2024. Maybe when we get close to it, it'll say it. But the articles I'm reading are saying in, like this third season will be the final season, which feels like that can be the case. It feels like we are setting up for the end. And I talked about this earlier. Now that I read a little bit more into the, like I said, I'm still kind of roughly in the same spot I was when I referenced it earlier in my reviews about where I was in a webtoon. I haven't read any more recently, but having skimmed through the thumbnails, it seems like everything that kind of goes down in season one is the moment. And so it seems like season two and potentially three are just kind of their own things built off the backbone of the foundation that is this, you know, webtoon. But season one is closer to what it is, and I think it just stays in the apartment building. That's my understanding. Once again, I have not read the ending of this. I'm basing this on thumbnails of the chapters I skimmed across, and it seemed like stuff I'd the little because at that point I was already starting season two, so I'd already finished season one, and some of the thumbnails I saw seemed like they overlapped with some of the stuff I was aware of from season one. So like this military stuff and all these storylines in this season seem to be based like it does seem like the TV show has kind of gone its own route past where the webtoon was and kind of continued on. So this is kind of uncharted territory, I believe. Once again, I you correct me if I you don't have to spoil anything, but just let me know if I'm off basis with that thought. That it's just like, right, the webtoon does end differently because it ends where season one is just they play things out differently and that everything going forward is just kind of its own thing. So but I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in season three. Um, it's kind of nice to also know we won't have to wait not even that long. Like right? summer's anywhere between like I'd, I'd say like what May to August would be summertime. So it's not that long. We're 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 pushing on eh, six seven months at most. We have to wait. So I, I'm excited to see where season three takes us. How this all will potentially wrap it wrap up if this is in fact the final season. Which considering everything going on, it feels like. It feels like it. And maybe that's also even more reason why they filmed season two and three back to back. Just to, because like right that way we don't have to worry about like, oh, let's either Netflix let them go ahead and do that because it's like, hey, we're want to um, give you an opportunity to like properly wrap it up. Or they're doing that because they're like, yeah, we don't know if Netflix is going to give us an opportunity. Uh, it's just being a Korean show. And yes, it's Netflix. But I also don't know how much they have say over stuff like that. I don't know how much of this is like does Netflix own this? Is it just a licensing deal? Like it's being like made, well, I'm assuming, cause I don't know, maybe it airs on a different, in a different place on Korea instead. And maybe it doesn't air on Netflix or maybe it does air on Netflix even internationally. So maybe Netflix kind of owns it in the same right as Squid Game. I hope it's not like in the same, same situation. Cause I don't, I want people who are, you know, the creators behind these things to get paid and not screwed out of money. But either way, that's a, that's a whole tangent in itself. But like I said, I'm, I'm excited to see how this all plays out, how this all wraps up. Because I wasn't expecting this ending to be as open-ended as it was. I mean, to be fair, season one was as well. I mean, there's plenty of plot threads, but it feels like there are so many scattered threads with this ending, but it's all relative to each other. So it's still it's still not that big of a deal because it's like, like I said, at be, technically three, four story bonds kind of left open-ended. But a lot of that's going to converge. Like I said, um, Honey, I'm sure that storyline is going to converge with the shelter, which is also going to connect with um, Chun Young coming back. But all the stuff happening at that facility is going to eventually find its way to the refuge that is the shelter, because that's going to come into like a blow um, clashing of monsters and humans. And also, Hyun and Eon Yu's storylines are going to connect in that same capacity, too. So. It'll be interesting to see what season three has in store for us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.